Now, here we go. Verse 17, here comes the gospel. It came to pass when the sun went down, it was dark, that behold, there was a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between the pieces. What's going on? Okay, so let's take a look at this. Turn to Deuteronomy 29.20. When someone gets it, and then someone turn to Galatians 3.13, and we'll look at those two verses for a minute. Who's got Deuteronomy 29.20? Uh, Julian, go ahead. So he's talking about iniquities that people commit, and he says his anger will smoke against this man, and all of the iniquities will settle upon him. You hear that? What happens to Jesus Christ on the cross? All the iniquities settle upon him, and God's anger and wrath is consumed on him. God doesn't say, because um, people sin, you need to die on the cross. God says, my holy righteous anger burns against my son. That's what's going on on the cross. Somebody go to Galatians. Who's got Galatians 3.13? All right, so when it says that Christ becomes a curse for us, we read that and go, oh, that's nice. He became my curse. That's great. Curse, curse against who? Curse for who? It's the father. The father t- makes his son a curse. <laughs> it's the father doing this. People aren't standing around looking at Jesus on the cross going, you're such a curse, blasphemer, you're horrible. Um, So therefore, by you dying on the cross, you can become my redemption. They're looking at him as a curse because he's on a cross. Anybody who hangs on a tree, per the Old Testament, is cursed by the Father, not by us, by the Father. So what you have going on here, this smoking oven that's passing between the animals is God Almighty, it's Yahweh, in his righteous anger burning against sin. That's part of the gospel. Then you have this idea of a flaming or burning torch. If somebody can go to Exodus 13, 21, and then John 8, 12. I'll give you a second to find um, Exodus If you remember, something's going on when the people have left Egypt and how the Father, God Almighty, stays with the people. So why does he go as a pillar of fire at nighttime? Why does he do that? What does it say? To give them light. Do you realize there's no such thing as darkness? It's kind of cool. All darkness is is the absence of light. So what God is doing in Exodus is he's demonstrating how much he loves the Israelites because during the day he's with them in a cloud, but he can't be seen in person because they're still sinful. And at night, (coughs) he's this light that gives them light. Paul says, uh, and David says this as well, in your light, we see light. Right? Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a... The only way we see light is the Bible. We can't rationalize this stuff. God is the one who opens our eyes so we can see. What does John 8, 12 say? I am the... Way, the truth, and the life. No, nope. you're going to hell. I am the light of the world. Here you have, going between the pieces, you have the Father's burning anger and the Son, who's the light of the world. This is the gospel. <laughs> the gospel is not to just believe and you'll be in heaven. The gospel is that the father takes his son who's perfect and makes his son sin and punishes his son for you. (laughs) And by punishing his son for you, you might, remember 2 Corinthians 5.21, you might become the righteousness of God in the son. Here you have, when Paul says preaching the gospel, you have an unconditional promise that you don't have to do anything 
except trust what he's done. And what has he done? He's poured out his wrath on his son for you so that you, if you trust him, can be forgiven. And that's why that verse is used over and over again in the New Testament. Abraham believed in God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Because you have the gospel here, a blood sacrifice, a covenant sacrifice that was done on Abraham's behalf. 